Yeah, hello everybody. Um, we got another uh, a really good boxing week ahead of us. This last one has been pretty good, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So next Saturday, the twenty second. Mm, there is a yeah. I'm gonna start first with this fight. <coughs> Dillian White versus Alexander Povetkin. This is a pretty intriguing fight because, um, yeah, I mean, you are not sure where both guys are actually right now. You know, the, you know, when it comes to their shape and everything. I mean, the, the big question is how much Povetkin has got a lot left in him at 41 years of age, right? Yeah, or he's turning 41 soon, September 2nd. Well, <laughs> he certainly hasn't been slowing down too much in, in the last couple of years, but... Uh, he, of course, is not what he used to be either. And Dillian White, he is the younger man by uh, uh, nine years here. And the taller man by two inches. And uh, he's got uh, three inch reach advantage also. So, uh, yeah. Both guys have the same rating on box track, which is five star. Well, the last fight of Dillian White uh, was in December when he beat Marius Wach on points. And uh, yeah, and uh, the last fight of Alexander Povetkin was also on that same night when he drew against Michael Hunter yes and before that he beat Huey Fury and he was stopped by Anthony Joshua for the first time in his life I fear that the same can happen here uh, even though I'm not really favoring White to win that way you know because uh, he's not uh, simply he's not as good as Anthony Joshua first of all and uh, you know he has perhaps some issues with punching precision or accuracy so he doesn't really always uh, but when he does land well he, he usually you know knocks you out and uh, He's definitely the favorite to win here, but of course I'm not completely counting out Povetkin either. Uh, it's just that, you know, at, at this age, let's face it, he's not very likely to beat a, a, a world-class heavyweight such as White. Even though I consider White to be the weakest of the elite heavyweights anyway right now but who knows i mean <laughs> so we've seen white can win either early like in the four, third fourth round or he can win late in like when he knocked out Derek chisora in the 11th round so i kind of favor white actually yeah Unless this goes the distance, I can see him stopping Povetkin somewhere uh, between the 8th and the 12th round. So uh, my prediction is that White uh, wins so <laughs> either by a decision or a late stoppage. Uh, yeah. Because Povetkin has only been stopped uh, against uh, uh, Anthony Joshua in seven rounds, but that was, you know, uh, simply a case of him being too small and 
just simply overpowered and outgunned against a much younger, bigger, stronger opponent. He didn't fight the right fight, I guess. So, yeah. So that was that one. <laughs> Dillian White is the favorite. I can see it maybe happening like another <laughs> split decision or a draw or whatever. I can see that happening, especially if White is not now. I mean, if he doesn't come in, in, in best shape. I can see Povetkin somehow, you know, taking him uh, really... I mean, <laughs> making it really tough for him. But, uh, yeah. White is the favorite. Alright, then we have a... Uh, a female actually fight the second time on <laughs> covering female fights, Katie Taylor. But this one is very good, Katie Taylor versus Delphine Persoon. And uh, Katie Taylor and Delphine Persoon already had a very close fight uh, last June, uh, no sorry, last year in June. Where some people said that Persoon should have been, uh, you know, should have gotten the decision, but it was a majority decision for Katie Taylor. So this time, yeah, they are fighting uh, again, uh, which is in Essex. So I guess Taylor is <laughs> almost as fighting like fighting at home. Well, personally, she's Belgian, of course. So. Yeah, she doesn't get to fight at home <laughs> a lot. I mean, of course, Persoon has actually 44 wins, which is very impressive, I mean, for a female boxer. 18 knockouts, 2 losses, and 1 by KO. But that was very, very long ago. Yeah, in 2010. So, uh, yeah. I think simply that Taylor will be hard to beat for Persoon because she is uh, she is going to be favored, you know, by the judges because she is uh, from the British Islands and uh, she is, uh, I think, let's see, 34. Well, the age difference is only one year in favor of Taylor, so it's not a big deal. But anyway. I think most likely Katie wins again by like by decision, yeah. So yeah, Katie Taylor I think wins against Delphine Persoon again. And then there's a um, yeah, this fight in Russia between uh, Ruslan Pfeiffer and Alexei Papin. It's a cruiserweight fight. Yeah, Ruslan Pfeiffer is uh, one of the best Russian cruiserweights now, and uh, but this guy Papin, he can he is a really big puncher, while Pfeiffer isn't really. Um, so yeah, uh, in his last fight, Papin lost to Ilunga Makabu, but that was a majority decision. A close fight. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking at his record. He hasn't. Yeah, he knocked out his smile. Silla a little bit force. She had, you know, a few kind of semi semi decent people, but Poppin hasn't really beaten anyone uh, that is worth talking about yet. Um, while Pfeiffer, his record is 25 wins with 16 knockouts and one loss, which was to Andrew Tabiti. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he does have some power, but he doesn't win by a KO or TKO that often, you know, so. Uh, I don't know, I still maybe favor him to win, uh, even though 
I'm a little bit divided, you know. Uh, this guy, Alexei Pakun, has got 10 KOs of 11 wins. Uh, but he's the older guy, so he's started out kind of late. So I think Pfeiffer wins probably on points. And then finally the really big fight of uh, this whole month is between uh, Elader Alvarez and Joe Smith Jr. This fight was supposed to happen in July the 16th but it got postponed uh, so now finally it's happening wow <laughs> yeah yes this is a very exciting fight at light heavyweight you know um, of course Alvarez has only one loss which was to Kovalev after knocking him out first so he has fought this year actually in January and he knocked out Michael Seals in seven rounds which was kind of yeah impressive and Joe Smith Jr. Uh, he beat also fought in January and beat Jesse Hart by split decision which was also one of his you know best victories so far so I guess he looked like he had, you know, learned to box a little bit, Joe Smith Jr. Uh, he was, er earlier he was just a crude puncher more or less, now he, yeah, looks like he may be a serious competitor. So, let's see, both guys are of equal height, six feet tall. Um, yeah, I don't see Joe Smith's reach, but Alvarez has a rather big reach for his height, 76 inches. But he's 36, while uh, Joe Smith Jr. is 30. Still, I, I don't think the age plays such a big part, because Alvarez doesn't look like he has started to slow down at, at all, you know. So he was 34 when he knocked out Sergei Kovalev, so, you know. He also started as a pro a little, a little late, so, yeah. Um, I do favor Alvarez, you know, to win here. Because simply, uh, he has the, the better record than Smith Jr. Has beaten better guys, even though Smith beat Bernard Hopkins, but <laughs> it was a very, very old Bernard Hopkins, and uh, he also knocked out Andre Fonfara, but uh, Fonfara was also already, you know, had experienced a few, you know, big losses, and uh, has been knocked out before, and that stuff, so, but I still do give Joe Smith Jr. a puncher's chance, definitely, because he is always, always a dangerous opponent for anybody, you know, but the big problem is that he simply is not a technical boxer, he's not, he, even though he has improved, as I said earlier, but still, he's not gonna be like, you know, Dmitry Bivo, like who really outboxed him, or somebody like him. So, but I think this fight will be very, very good and entertaining, and I can expect a few. I, I, I expect a back and forth action and uh, uh, several knockdowns, you know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, maybe we will see a stoppage victory, but. I I kind of favor I lean towards a later hours win here. Yeah. But how he will win <laughs> I really can't say. Uh, it's hard to, to predict. He does have power definitely to stop Joe Smith Jr. That that's without question. Um uh, but of course as I said Joe Smith Jr. has <laughs> the power to stop later hours so yeah it will be I mean if Joe Smith wins this fight 
and it will be a sign that he really, really has improved, that he really, you know, can be a major, major player in this division. Like if he loses, you know, it will be, it depends, of course, on the manner of his loss. If he really gets blown out or, you know, school, taken to school or whatever, which I doubt he will, but if he does, then it will be a sign that he doesn't, just doesn't belong, like, with the very best, so, yeah. It will be a really good, good uh, test for both. Yeah, alright, so that was it uh, for this time. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, enjoy the fights, and uh, until the next time, see you, bye-bye.